Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, our dear Imam had mentioned it last night, so I will just repeat it. Uh, we have arranged as we are getting set to enter into the blessed month of Rabi al Awal, a certain programs to enlighten us about the greatness of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, in terms of our Jummah khutbah schedule over the next few Fridays, inshallah. Today we're very uh, happy to have with us our dear visiting scholar, Maulana Kabir Muhammad, and he will be uh, delivering his khutbah today on the topic events before and after the blessed birth of the Holy Prophet. Next week, Friday, inshallah, we'll be having Maulana Shiraz Muhammad, and his topic will be Prophet Muhammad, our greatest role model. And then the Friday after that, Maulana Ibrahim and written with the topic, The Hardest Day in the Life of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, we would also have other programs which you would be informed about as the weeks go by, inshallah. So with that very short uh, announcement, I now invite our dear uh, visiting Scholar Maulana Kabir Muhammad to deliver today's khutbah and lead us in the Jum'ah Salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Was salatu was salamu ala sayyidil mursalin. Wa qad qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'anil Majid wal Furqanil Hamid. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله صلوات الله وملائكته وأنبيائه ورسوله وحملت أرشه وجميع خلقه على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد. respected علماء brothers and sisters. today إن شاء الله وعلى الأزيز we are looking at the blessed birth of نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the events that took place before and the events that took place after. Inshallah, al Before we begin, we would like to reflect on some ayats of the Quran in Surah Fat. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. Indeed, we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a shahid, as a witness, as a mubashir, as a person who brings glad tidings. Bashiran, Bashir, person who brings glad tidings, or good news. One nadira and a nadir. Nazir means a person who warns. When we look in the books of Tafsir, one of the oldest Tafsir is a book called Tafsir Tabari. And Imam At Tabari, he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is or he has been sent as a shahid, as a witness, it means he has been sent as a witness for all the prophets who came before him. From Adam alayhi salam to the last person, he sallallahu alayhi is a witness. So on the day of Qiyamah, when people would say that no prophet came to them or they didn't receive the message, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that is not true. This prophet was sent to so and so. So he witnessed for all of these ummah, all the previous ummah as well. He is also a witness for this ummah. 
Because according to the hadith that mentions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says for himself that he sees our good deeds. And when he sees our good deeds, he prays Allah. And when he sees that we do things other than this, meaning bad deeds, he asks Allah to forgive us. So even our deeds are presented to him, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ayat continues that he is Bashiran. What Bashir means? One who gives glad tidings. And Imam Tabari goes on to explain glad tidings and the Jannah. He gives you glad tidings about paradise. Now what does he warn you about? He warns you about Anil Jahannam. He warns you about the fire of hell. So that being said, let's go into some of the events that took place prior to the birth of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we know that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was building the Kaaba with his son, Ismail, he made a dua that a messenger would to come from the progeny of this child. Ismail alayhi salam. And we also know that Isa alayhi salam, he foretold the coming of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is found in the book of John, where he says, and after me a comforter will come. So when we look at what the word means in Greek, etc., I translate as Ahmad. Ahmad will come, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there are two narrations here. What we are using is called the Maulid of Ibn Kathir. So most people know Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Every, and everybody accepts Tafsir Ibn Kathir, right? So Ibn Kathir wrote a maulid on the birth of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this little booklet is about the events concerning the birth of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Events that took place before and about the birth itself and miracles that happened after. So there's a narration here that he quotes from Ibn Ishaq. So Ibn Ishaq is an authority in the field of Sirah. It says, Athar ibn Yazid narrated to me, that is Ibn Ishaq, from Khalid ibn Ma'dan, from the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they said, Messenger of Allah, tell us about yourself. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the supplication of my father Ibrahim and the glad tidings of Isa. And when my mother fell pregnant with me, she saw as a as if a light came out from her, through which Busra was illuminated in the land of Sham, in the land of Syria. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's saying that he is the dua of Ibrahim. He is the glad tidings of Isa. And when his mother gave birth to him, she saw this light emanating from her, to the extent that she could see the palaces in Syria, etc. There's another narration here. And this narration, we used to hear these hadith long time. You know, when it's a long time, you know, like when I was a child, so like 30 years ago, I think. Right? We used to hear these type of hadiths. And unfortunately, we don't hear these hadiths anymore. So this hadith is related by Imam al bayhaqi Also mentioned, well, sorry, he mentioned this in his book called Dalail al Nubuwa. Dalail al Nubuwa is about proofs of prophethood. So the book deals only with the proof of prophethood, meaning miracles. So it's about eight or nine volumes. That only talks about miracles of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On Saturday the 8th, inshallah, Aziz, we will be doing a small book on the miracles of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Princess Town Jama Masjid. So you all are invited. And if you come in, let me know so I could cater, right? Um, yeah, we, we cater in food and refreshments and stuff, right? So if you come in, let me know. I know some of you are going for Umrah, and you will not be here, but anybody who is here and is willing to come, you could talk to me after Jummah, and I could make your arrangements, inshallah. So Imam Bai Haki mentions, as did Imam um, Hakim, that Abdurrahman ibn Zaid ibn Aslam, from his father, from his grandfather, from Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who narrated that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Adam alayhi salam said, O oh Allah, O oh Lord, I ask you by the right of Muhammad to forgive me. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that Adam alayhi salam said to Allah, O oh my Lord, I ask you by the right of Muhammad to forgive me. Allah said, O oh Adam, how have you come to know of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when I have not created him yet? He, Adam alayhi salam said, because when you created me with your hand and you breathed into me of your spirit, I lifted my head and I saw written on the pillars of the throne, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah that there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. 
I knew that you would not affix anyone to your name except that most beloved of people to you. Allah said, you have spoken the truth, O Adam. He is the most beloved of people to me. And since you asked me by his right, I forgive you. If it had not been for Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would not have created you, O Adam. If it was not for Muhammad. There's another hadith which is called Hadith Laulak. Or Laulaka is a hadith Qudsi. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laulaka ma khalaqtu dunya. If it was not for you, O Muhammad, I would not have created the world. This is why, you know, the Qasida, Muhammad Nahute, Kuch bi Nahuta. People hear these things and they say, what kind of Qasida is that way? If it wasn't for Muhammad, nothing would have been created. These Qasidas actually have some backing from the Hadith. This is where these things came from. So when you hear these things, don't mock it and laugh at it. And well, madness seems for us anyway. Go to the Hadith. You mock the Hadith? No. So it is there in the Hadith literature. And there are many other Hadith like this. So here we see that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been foretold in du'as. He's been prophesied by different prophets. And now we are seeing the rank of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Adam Alayhi Salam, he asked Allah, by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forgive me. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, Adam Alayhi Salam is forgiven. That is some of the events that took place before the birth of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we speak about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is a very... Um, Touching. So if you find that I get an emotional or you find like I get sad or just understand that it's not easy when we speak about the, the Hakikat Muhammadiyah, the Muhammadan reality. For most people when they speak about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they speak about a man. They speak about a man who dropped a message and went and that is it. But for those of us who knows the reality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who have an idea of it, we can't say we really know it but have an idea or understanding of it to some extent, we know that this is not an ordinary individual that we are speaking about. So when this time of the year comes around and people want to waste their time arguing whether they should celebrate Milad or they shouldn't celebrate Milad, or as we're calling it now, Mawled, it's taken away from the dignity of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have to understand that. Don't waste your time to argue whether you should celebrate or you shouldn't celebrate whether you should commemorate or shouldn't commemorate. What you should do in the month of Rabiul Awal is get nearer to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read a book on the Sirah. Go online and order the Mawlid of Ibn Kathir. Read about it. Read about the events that took place before, the events that took place after. Get accustomed. That isn't happening in our community. God alone knows why. All we focus on is argument after argument after argument. And what happens with us after a while? We get burnt out. Everybody gets burnt out. And then, then some young guy going to come up and read a magazine. Or he's going to read a handbill that somebody printed. And that's going to get a fella rejuvenated. Boy. He pump himself up and he bring back the argument again. And then somebody going to respond to the argument. And year after year, they argue on this. You know, I, have a, I was mentioning in Barapur recently, I have a document from 1950 about these things, about Milad, etc. They're arguing since 1950. I born in 1983, in case anybody wants to do the mathematics. 1983, I'm in 2022 now, and I'm still dealing with if we should celebrate Milad and Nabi or not. When we look at the thick of it, I mentioned this before previously in this Jamaat, when we look at the thick of it, because this is a thick issue, this is not an Akida issue, Milad and Nabi is considered to be Mustahab or Mandub. And if you look at what the meaning is, Mustahab, or the meaning for Mandub is, you would come across a definition that says, Mustahab. If you do it, you get blessings, and if you don't do it, you don't get sin. Mandub, if you do it or you don't do it, there's no blessing, there's no sin. Then why are you wasting your time arguing? <coughs> Leave it and move on. If you want to do it, you do it, and if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But at least respect people's views, and at the end of the day, we are all brothers. We can't belittle one another. And we should not use the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the maqam of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to create division in the community. Right? Some of the events that took place before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, there's an incident here narrated about the Jews. Um, 
This is found in the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Acts. So let's look at the, what is mentioned. The Jews conspired to prevent the birth of the promised prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so as to ensure that the prophethood, which for so long had been amongst the children of Isaac or Ishaq, may not be transferred to the children of Ismail or Ishmael, their brethren tribe, as foretold repeatedly in the Holy Bible, the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Acts. And this is what it states. I shall raise them up a prophet from amongst their brethren, meaning from amongst the Arabs, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I co shall command him. So the Jews had prior knowledge. The Christians had prior knowledge that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would come amongst the Arabs. And there's an incident that is narrated here that one day the assassins got a golden opportunity that Abdullah had gone out hunting alone in one of the surrounding areas. Wahhab ibn Munaf, this would be his father-in-law, this is Amina, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu father, was also out hunting that day. He saw from a distance that Abdullah was encircled on all sides by 90 armed men with drawn swords. All proceeded to attack the defenseless Abdullah. Wahhab ibn Munaf, Abdul Munaf, and his men rushed to rescue Abdullah. Before they could have even taken a few steps, he, Wahhab ibn Abdul Munaf, saw that a number of horsemen came down from the sky. They slew all the 90 attackers, and Abdullah was saved, even before assistance could reach him. This is one of the reasons why he proposed his daughter to marry Abdullah, right? Wahhab ibn, ibn Abdul Munaf then took Abdullah safely away from the pile of the 90 men, or the corpses of the 90 men, who came to kill him to his brother Abdul Muttalib the father of Abdullah. After relating, this is one thing that we need to point out. Everybody just say Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, real name is Shaiba, right? Abdul Muttalib, real name is Shaiba. So he, he was born in, uh, he grew up in, sorry, he was born either in Mecca or he grew up in Medina. At that time it's called Yatrib. And his uncle, whose name was Muttalib, went to collect him from Medina and bring him back into Mecca. So when the uncle brought him from Medina into Mecca, they, custom of the Arabs is that their servant would walk in front of the camel or the, or the horse or whatever it is. And Shaiba, who is Abdul Muttalib, he was the one walking in front. So whilst he was walking in front and they entered Makkah, everyone started to call him Abdul Muttalib, the servant of Muttalib. But in reality, Muttalib was his uncle. And his real name was Shaiba. His name is not Abdul Muttalib, but Shaiba. So it goes on to say, after related the incident, he proposed that his nephew Abdullah be married to his young daughter Amina. According, they were married the very night. So this is what happened. This is how they end up getting married. What took place on the birth of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is concerning the emperor, the Roman emperor Justine II. The Roman Emperor Justinus II was frightened and alarmed at the date of the birth of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went into the royal chapel to pray on that morning. He was very surprised to find that the beautiful statue of Isa, or Jesus, Christ had very strangely come down from its firm base and was lying on the ground. It reminded him of the foretellings of Jesus, that on the day of the birth of the promised prophet, all the idols of all over the world will fall down. Uh, it says, page 169, the Gospel of Barnabas. As he lifted up the idol of Christ, it spoke and again fell on its face on the floor, and it declared, a child has been born with its foreskin circumcised miraculously. This child would be the greatest personage to come on the earth, and he would be from amongst the circumcised people. This baby was not from a Jewish family, but from the brethren of the Jews, meaning the Arabs. He would be a destroyer of idols and lay the foundation for the destruction of idolatry. Those who would not listen to his teachings would be the losers in this world and in the hereafter. That he would be the light of learning, which would be the cause of filling the earth with wisdom and knowledge and removing the darkness of ignorance. So this is mentioned in the Gospel of Barnabas. So here we are seeing different events taking place. There's also a narration here concerning um, Khosros that he mentions on the birth of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 14 pillars from his castle or his palace fell and the fire of the Zoroastrians outed. So all of these events took place concerning the birth of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now some other events took place as well. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a baby and he was taken up by Amina, sorry, by Halima, 
And all of us know the story that when she went to take the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nobody wanted him because he was an orphan. Everybody knows this. He was an orphan, he had no father, meaning she would not get anything in, in return for taking care of him. So no one wanted him. And we look at how we treat orphans as well in our community. Sometimes we shun them. And we shouldn't do this because we understand our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was an orphan. Halima took the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said that the camel that they came with, it was full of milk. The others became full of milk. All her animals that she took care of, all of them gave milk. To the extent that the people that she lived with, her neighbors, uh, the people from her tribe, their animals didn't have anything. They were not given milk. So they decided that they would send these animals to graze with her animals. And still, even though those animals went to graze with her animals, those animals still couldn't give milk. And she realized that this child that she brought from Mecca was something different, was someone different. It was not an ordinary person. Imam Suyuti Rahmatullah he mentions that when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a baby, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would point at the moon from his cradle. And if the Prophet Sallallahu would move his hand to the right, the moon would move to the right. And if he moved to the left, the moon would move to the left. And to some of us, we would say, what madness is this? What, what he's talking about? We never heard this before. But then as the same Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would point at the moon and split it in half. And no one denies that. Everyone agrees with that. That he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pointed the moon and the moon was split in half. But if we say to them that when he was a child, he was a baby, and he would point at the moon and the moon would follow his movements, they would say, no, we do accept that one. How is it possible? There are other hadith, other narrations mentioned about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even moving the sun. That the time for Asr was going and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, apparently this hadith is mentioned in the Shifa al Qadiyyad, that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asleep on the lap of Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala didn't want to wake up the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he studied how to wake up the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Eventually when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam woke up, he saw that the time for Asr was coming to an end. And according to the hadith, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved his hand, pointed at the sun and moved his hand. And the sun went back up. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ali could pray the Asr Salat. When we talk about these things, people say, nah, boy, them fellas making up thing they, uh, you know, them thing daif, it's weak, it's fabricated. But when we talk about, this is why it's called a miracle, this is why it's called a mojiza. A miracle is something that does not happen naturally, right? So it's something that is miraculous in nature. It doesn't really happen just like that. And there are many, many ahadith that talks about the miracles that the Rasul Salaam did. And there are many things that I mentioned concerning the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. What happened? For instance, when he ﷺ was born, the Kaaba itself prostrated to the house that he was born in. That is something that nobody liked to talk about. Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, he says in his, one of his Qasida, he said, everybody going to the Kaaba, but let's go to the Kaaba's Kaaba. Meaning, let's go to Medina. Why? Because on the night of the birth of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Kaaba itself bent towards the house that the Prophet Sallallahu was born to, in. One girl who was disabled on the night of the birth of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she made a dua by the, by the one who has been born, by the Muhammad, cure me, this girl was disabled. The girl, when she made this dua, she became, all disability left her, right? She was fully cured. Her father wanted to go and see this blessed child. And they went and looked for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His mother Amina says that when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born, he came out easily. And he fell in frustration in such that position. And he raised his head and he made a dua. Ya Rabbi, habli ummati, ummati, ummati. Oh my Lord, my ummah, my ummah, my ummah. He, now born, and he's studying you. How much time for the day you study him today? You made a, think about the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at some of the duas. Or some of the incidents. We mentioned it last year here for Milad. The day, he died, the day that he saw Islam was buried, he was put in the ground, he was put in the earth. One of his cousins entered the grave with him to place the body in the ground. And his cousin, Khotam ibn, Ab ibn Abbas, this is the brother of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, I saw the lips of the Rasul Islam, moving. I saw the lips of the. This man dead. I saw the lips of the Prophet moving. I placed my ear next to his lips. Ya Rabbi, Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. 
Oh my Lord, my Ummah, my Ummah, my Ummah. He is making dua for you. You might say to yourself, oh, hey, Prophet dead, right? How are you making dua? This again is what we call the Hakikat Muhammadiyah, the Muhammadan reality, which most of us are not acquainted with. So when we hear narrations like this, it sounds like madness. But it's not madness. The companions ask the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, when was prophethood made incumbent upon you? When were you a prophet? When you were made a prophet? I was made a prophet when Adam was between body and soul. Adam wasn't created, I was already a prophet. In the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah to be Rabbikum, Allah took all the souls out of the back of Adam alayhi salam and he lined them up. And he asked all the souls, Allah to be Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? The first person to respond and say, Bala, yes indeed, was the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the first and he was sent last. This is why sometimes when we make dua, we say, that he, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil awwaleen wa salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil akhireen O oh Allah send blessings upon Muhammad the first and O oh Allah send blessings upon Muhammad the last There's so many things about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I would like to speak about and I know other Maulanas would like to speak other Shuyuk would like to speak about it but the time doesn't permit us to speak about him and his what he is really capable of. And we are not making any time, our people are not making any time to seek that knowledge. Yo, everybody wants to teach fiqh. Everybody wants to teach tafsir. Everybody wants to teach aqidah. How much people want to teach about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And to understand his greatness and his rank. You've not seen it, not in our community. I saw a video last night from Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama Institute. They have some nice lectures with Maulana Siddiq Ahmad Nasser. You all should try to attend those things. And hopefully it should be on Zoom. Try your best. Get this knowledge about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's, you know, we live for too long in this world and we don't understand the rank of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even in the grave when you would be questioned, what do you say about this man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Most of us have a wrong understanding of this, of this question. Most of us believe a picture is brought in the grave, an image is brought in the grave of the Rasul, in your grave, of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is not true. What do you say about this man, meaning that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is present in your grave, or that you will see him from your grave? What do you say about this man? How would you respond? This is something that we have to ponder upon. Especially when we take other systems above the system of Allah, we take other laws above the laws of Allah. How would we respond in the grave when you are asked, who is your Lord when you do not follow the Sharia? How would you be able to answer, what is your religion when you do not follow the Sharia? How would you respond when you are asked, who is this man when you don't follow the Sharia? When you don't follow the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi how would you respond? Brothers, sisters, my plea to you is to get close to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If it is by reading a book of the Sirah, if it's attending lectures about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if it's only to read the root on the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, try your best to connect with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is, and as the Quran says, he is Raufur Rahim. Allah himself calls the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Raufur Rahim. These are names of Allah. And Allah uses his own names to describe Rasulullah sallallahu He is most kind and most compassionate, the Rasul. And who is com kind and compassionate too? For the mu'mineen, for the believers. So get close to your Nabi, get to know your Nabi, inshallah, Aziz. Let's begin with the Arabic Qutla, inshallah.
اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اي على السلام اي على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل يوم الجمعة سيد الأيام ولا نعبد ولا نستعين إلا إياه والذي فرار صلاة اليوم الجمعة بقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نجل الصلاة يوم الجمعة فسوي الله ذكر الله وزر البيع والصلاة على سيد الأنام حجر مولانا محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أفضل البشر بعد الأنبياء بالتحقيق أمير المؤمنين أبي بخر الصديق وعلى ناتك بالصدق والصواب أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب وعلى كمل الحياء والإيمان أمير المؤمنين عثمان بن يفان وعلى سيد الله غالب أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب وعلى إمامين هما مين زائدين شهيدين أبي محمد الحسني وأبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أمهما سيدة النساء فاطمة زهراء وعلى مه شريفين متحرين من الأدناس حمزة العباس وعلى ستة الباكة من أشارة المباشرة وسائر والصحابة والتابعين ردوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي الله ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى ملائكه المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى آل وعولى وعز وجل تم وهم وأكبر Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din 
إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ اهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ وَلِلَّهِ جُنُورُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا إن أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتوازره وتواكره وتسبهوه بكرة وآسيلا الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل اعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنات والناس الله اكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وخينا عذاب النار حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النسير وفرانا خير ربنا إليك المسير اللهم فاز أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله بروتك دي أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله هف مرسي عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله هرد أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ان أصل أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله كرّك أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
صلوات الله وملائكته وانبيائه ورسله وحملات عرشه وجميع خلقه على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله يا رب العالمين we ask you to forgive us ya allah and have mercy on us ya rabbul alamin o allah all the elen members of this jamaat and surrounding jamaat and all the jamaat ya rabbul alamin of this country and around the world ya rabbul alamin we ask you to grant shifa to all the elen members ya rabbul alamin o allah grant success to all of us who are facing trials ya rabbul alamin o allah grant success to all of us who are writing exams ya rabbul alamin o allah grant success to all of us in this life and the next life ya rabbul alamin صلى الله على حبيبي سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم